uh, Robertson over in Springfield with the Cardinals playing shortstop over there. Back-to-back home runs for Kramer as that was the first of the week off of, uh, off of Kershaw. He backed it up against uh, Tulsa the next night with another dinger. So a nice start to the double-A season for uh, the former Tigers shortstop and a really good week for, uh, for his family as uh, his mom was with us earlier this week celebrating her third national championship. And Kramer is kind enough to stop by here with us. Back in Baton Rouge on this Thursday morning. Good morning, man. How are you? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, you've been playing baseball for a long time. I got to imagine earlier this week was a highlight that uh, you'll never forget. Yeah, absolutely. That was that was definitely one of the highlights of my career. Uh, pretty special moment and uh, something that I'll, I'll get to tell my grandkids one day. When did you find out that you were going to go up against Kershaw? Uh, there was rumors about it the night before. Um, and then when we got to the we got to the yard, uh, they put up the lineup, and they always showed the starter for the next day, and we saw Kershaw. Um, so I was I was pretty fired up about it. It's, it was a great opportunity, and uh, I just wanted to see what it, see what his stuff looked like in person. And um, luckily, I was able to run into one. And so this isn't like you you, you didn't get to watch film on, on Kershaw or anything the night before, did you? Uh, well, every day we show up to the field. Um, they have the scouting reports and they have video of the pitcher that we're facing. Uh, so it's pretty funny. Usually you get um, some minor league film, which, which isn't too high quality or anything like that. Um, but we got there and they were showing him, showing his, uh, his film from last year in the playoffs against Boston in the World Series. So it was, uh, <laughs> nice. it's, pretty, it's pretty comical. And, and the uh, scouting report um, was just so much different than anybody, anybody you'd ever seen. Um, but it, you know, it was, it was pretty exciting for all of us. We were we were all looking forward to the opportunity, uh, just to, just to face him and see what he looked like. Hell yeah, man! And you did it, like you said. You have that home run now for life. So so you said yeah. it was a bit different. Uh, I want to talk to you about some of the differences. First off, from just a like quality of life standpoint, what's it like going from LSU baseball and those facilities and everything to now Double A baseball? Uh, you know, Double A is. Is, is so much better than, than the levels I've been at. Um, this is the first level where you're like, wow, this this is this feels like professional baseball. Like okay. you're playing you're playing at nice stadiums, you're staying in nicer hotels, nicer clubhouses. Um, but I mean, two years ago, I, I went from playing in Omaha in front of 25,000 people on ESPN, and you know you're treated like a big leaguer. And then a week later, I'm in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, um, riding a, riding a bus in front of no fans hardly and, um you know it's humbling um but you got to go through it Every, everybody's gone through it uh if you if you want to reach the ultimate goal um so it can get tough at times and, and you know if, if you don't stay self-motivated it can get monotonous no matter what level you're at you have you know a game every day um and you're riding the bus sometimes 13 hours through the night to play another game um but, you know, I think as long as you stay self-motivated and, and you uh, can see the light at the end of the tunnel, it, it's worth it. How much has the love of, of the game that you have been tested through this process? Uh, it's, it's tested every day because um, in college, you know, you, you have – you face the guys in the SEC that, that are the best in the country, but you get your breaks because of the bullpens and, and your midweek games. Not everybody is as is, is good as what you're going to see in Pro Bowl. In Pro Bowl, you get the starter out. Um, and then there's a guy throwing 95, a guy throwing 100, and it's every single day. So those over fives can turn to over 20 real, real quick. Mm. Um, so you, you know your your love for the game, your self confidence gets tested every single day, uh, and you just have to take it one bat, one game at a time, um, and really just um, continue continue to push. And uh, it can get difficult at times, but um, that's that's why you see so few make it. It's not it's not necessarily always the talent. It's, it's being able to stay motivated and, and still have that self belief every day. And so I kind of asked you about the differences in quality of life. What about competition from like LSU, like high level SEC play to then single A, double A? How does it stack up? You know your best guys in the SEC. Um, it's it's very comparable, um, but it's just one through nine on the field now are the best players you see in the SEC. Every single pitcher that you see in, in, in double A is what is the best pitcher that you saw is, is your Friday night guy mm. in the SEC. 
So each level has been a step up. I thought that um, low A was pretty comparable to the SEC, uh, whereas you have the best, some of the guys are the best of the best, and then high was a step up from that, and now double A is um, double A is definitely the biggest step I think, um, just because guys now it's it's not just stuff, it's not just talent. Guys have uh, started to perfect it, and um, now I remember getting getting double A and looking around and being like, wow, everybody is is so good here. Like every everybody is is really special, and they've started to perfect their craft at this level. All right, LSU's been on a heater of shortstops, and Kramer Robertson joining us here on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge, ESPN New Orleans, and ESPN Alexandria. He's on Twitter at Kramer R3 right now. Is uh, up in Springfield playing Double A ball with the uh, with the Cardinals organization. Um, all right, going back to Bregman, even before that, the, the shortstop position at LSU has has been pretty prestigious. Um, I remember Nolan Kane telling me your first year as a shortstop starter for LSU, leaving road series is around the conference and the coaching staff saying to themselves, guys, we had the best shortstop in the series. The next year, you're an All-American. Josh Smith has been named the SEC Player of the Week for his performance uh, last week versus Texas A&M. A lot of people around the program believe him to be one of the best players and the leaders in, in the clubhouse. Um, what's your relationship like with Smith, and, and what's, what's it like that fraternity in playing that position for LSU baseball? Oh, I love Josh. He, he's a great kid. Um, you know, they, they call it LSU DBU, and um, we like to call it shortstop U as well. Um, when you when you take it, take that position on the field, um, you feel a, a sense of responsibility to uh, represent for all the guys that came before you at that position. Um, and it, it's so much bigger than you. I remember when I would run up every day, I felt like I was not only representing myself and LSU, but all the guys that came before me. Um, and it, and it started started with well, in the Minari area. It started with Nola and then Bregman and myself and now, and now Josh. Um, and you know, from day one when Josh stepped on campus, he you know he had so much confidence, so much talent um, to be just a freshman. And and what he's doing now doesn't surprise me at all. He's he's a special player, and um, you know he's he's doing great things for LSU, and he's he's really leading that team right now. He's such a leader. And, um, he's going to continue to do that for them, and I think that um, he's going to help them make a uh, playoff push when they get there. Yeah, so, Kramer, the teams right now, they've, they, if you've been keeping up, they're 8-4 and four in the SEC. They've been doing real well, uh, but they have dropped a couple midweek games. Uh, this is causing <laughs> yeah. people to panic a little bit. Uh, two-parter, do midweek games matter? You can be honest now, you're out of it. And why do teams sometimes struggle a little bit in those midweeks? Do midweek games matter? That's enough. Man, Maneri, <laughs> Maneri is not if he hears this, Maneri is not going to be happy with me for saying this. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, yeah. honesty. Thank Sing you. and rejoice from the mountaintops. <laughs> I, might be, I, might be first, I, might be, <laughs> I might be the first one to say that publicly. Yeah. Um, but I get, I get, I mean, I, I still I follow everybody on Twitter, and I, and I, I get tired of seeing it. Everyone freaked out over a midweek game. Like, all right, they lost one. Like, you know, that's when you play a midweek game, that is the other team's World Series. That's that's their biggest game of the year, yeah. and it's just not for LSU. It's it's just not. I mean, you know, you like to win every game. They play hard. I, I remember when I was there. Like, we're not trying to lose it. Like, we're going out there. We're playing hard, um, but we got bigger fish to fry. We're trying to win the SEC, and we're trying to. Get to the postseason and and get to the and get to Omaha. Um, so I don't like to say it, it doesn't matter, but it's not the end all be all. Like, but it does. You know, I, my my senior year we lost, I don't know, six or seven midweek games, and look look what we did. You know, it's getting. You know, it's the most important thing is is playing well down the stretch in the SEC, setting yourself up for a national seed, um, and getting things rolling at the right time. And and I remember that's what we did each year that I was at LSU. <laughs> Um, you know, we, we got things going towards the end of the SEC and to the SEC tournament, and um, I think that's the most important thing is um, getting things going towards the end of the year. They uh, the, 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 the starting pitcher for Southern the other night, Eli Finney, who had the Tigers no hit through seven, called it the best moment of his life following right. yeah. that game. So, I mean, it gives you an idea. All right, uh, your mom stopped by here on Monday morning. She's on Good Morning America right now as we speak. Um, she's got the best women's college basketball program in the country. They were crowned national champions on Sunday night. Great video of you and your teammates watching the final seconds tick off the clock. Then ESPN caught the FaceTime. How cool is this for your family right now? 
Oh man, I'm so fired up for her, um, for the whole family. It was it was a really special moment. I mean, I, I that's about as, mo- as much anxiety as I've ever had in my life. We were on a bus from uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas, to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Christian A, my former teammate at LSU, had the, had the game on his phone, um, and we were watching together. And then as the game went on, and it got closer and closer, more guys on the bus started huddling around us. Uh, and then the, even the Latin guys started watching. I don't think they even knew what was going on, but they were cheering with us on every play. Um, and when they won it, man, that was I didn't know what to do. And I, and I know I, uh, my mom wanted me to be there so bad because I was there in 2005 and 2012 when they cut the nets down. Um, but obviously I couldn't be there this time. So the only thing I could think to do uh, was FaceTime my brother-in-law. I didn't really think that he was going to answer. Um, and then it said connecting, and when it connected, it was just my mom's face, and she was crying. So I, I didn't know what to do, so I just started screaming at her on the bus. <laughs> um, and, then, and then I looked, just happened to glance down to my left, um, and Shania still had the game on ESPN, uh, his phone on ESPN. And I looked down, and they were showing my mom on FaceTime with me. So oh, that's weird. Her, that's awesome. And then saw, and then saw myself on FaceTime on ESPN. I was like, oh, oh man, that's that's weird. That's cool, um, but it was it was a special moment. I'm just glad. I, th- I think she needed to see my face after all that with the injury. She was so emotional at the time. Yeah. Um, so ha- so many emotions were going through her. Um, so I was glad that just her seeing my face. I think I think that made her feel good for a minute. That that was a cool moment for for ESPN to catch that family moment because you yeah. could see the emotion, kind of like as she gave the phone back to your brother-in-law, kind of like. It, the reality of it kind of hitting her and, and, and the emotion right. of it. It was cool, man. It, it's congratulations to your family. Continued to success uh, for you, man, yeah, man, in the uh, in the minors. I know keep chasing the dream, and uh, I know one day soon we'll be watching the bigs. Thanks for the time this morning, Kramer.